Man, Arcane certainly was a pleasant surprise. In an era of one terrible video game adaptation after another, a show based on the famously toxic League of Legends somehow managed to win the goodwill of critics and fans alike. There are a number of reasons for this phenomenon. Arcane's animation is gorgeous, its world building is tremendous, thanks no doubt to League lore, its plot is engaging and unpredictable, its action is stylistically pleasing and meaningful. And yet, what truly sets Arcane apart is the cast of characters that inhabit its world. Each character is unique in design and personality, fleshed out and fully realized, bringing his or her own motivations and worldview to the screen. A story can have a rich and complex plot, clever writing, and even an incredible world, but if the inhabitants of that world are shallow, unlikable, or boring, the audience will fail to connect with them in any way whatsoever, and the whole product will suffer greatly. Arcane, however, managed to make us love these characters who live in a world so different than our own. Most importantly, the show produced a main character in Vi, who embraces the role as a strong female lead in so many of the right ways and so few of the bad ones. Vi is competent and strong, but not ridiculously overpowered. Vi has had to struggle both physically and psychologically. Vi learns to adapt to overcome her weaknesses, flaws, and shortcomings, and Vi cares about other people. She fiercely loves and fights for those closest to her. All of that adds up to a character with depth, a protagonist who feels real, even in this fantasy steampunk world. Vi's motivations, desires, and way of thinking are not manufactured out of thin air for the sake of the plot, or worse, the message, but are derived from her backstory, from her tragic past, from having been forced to act as both sister and mother to Powder since she was altogether too young, from her years spent looking across the river and thinking of all the ways she could be better off. But hold that thought for a moment while I pay for my family's gym membership thanks to this video's sponsor, Factor. Factor makes it easier for you to meal plan and reduce time spent cooking or money spent on takeout by delivering fresh, never-frozen meals right to your doorstep, neatly packaged and ready to pack into your fridge. Or right into the microwave if you're especially hungry. The menu is updated every week and you can pick your favorite meals, or if you're feeling indecisive, let Factor select which chef-prepared meals will show up at your house. Their meal plans include keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, protein plus, and vegan plus veggie options, which include seafood, meat, and plant-based meals, so there's something for every set of taste buds. You can head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code SAMWISE50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Personally, I'm a very busy man. Between family, work, and trying to make videos, it's great to just pop a Factor meal into the microwave and then get back to work or editing or whatever my heart desires. There are no dishes to clean up unless you're fancy like me and insist on eating off a plate, so the process really couldn't be easier. So, head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code SAMWISE50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Thank you, Factor, for sponsoring this video, and now we'll get back to Vi. Vi is, at heart and in reality, an underdog. Someone whom the world has shoved down, yet who refuses to stay put and accept the hand life has dealt her. Audiences love this. We happily eat up one underdog story after the other. There is something incredibly satisfying about watching heroes overcome seemingly impossible odds through their resourcefulness, creativity, and unrelenting resolve. A good David vs. Goliath story will always find a place in its viewers' hearts. A good David vs. Goliath story. We do not, by and large, like to have the point that our main character is oppressed and downtrodden beaten into our thick skulls with a ham-fisted sledgehammer. Vi and her family certainly have it rough, but Arcane wisely does not overdo the time spent dwelling on their plight in order to manufacture sympathy. Instead, Arcane gives us a glimpse of Vi's tragic past in the opening scene, but then quickly switches to her doing what she does best, running headfirst into trouble. Vi's first real scene, the one that lays the groundwork for her character, shows her fighting, not physically, but metaphorically as she leads the heist into Piltover. What does this scene tell us about Vi? We learn that she trusts her abilities, honed over years of practice, that she is brave perhaps to the point of foolhardiness, and that she is willing to act in opposition to law and order if she judges it for the good of her family. All three of these character traits will continue to develop throughout the show. Vi is not a simple, one-dimensional character who needs to realize a single truth about herself or overcome a single point of resistance or oppression. She is complex and multifaceted, flitting between virtue and vice in several different areas, embarking on a character arc that is, as most good ones are, quite a bumpy ride. 
Bai's ascent from scrappy street kid to mechanical fist-wielding destroyer of Shimmermax is hardly a straight line. True to form, she has to struggle for every inch up that incline. Arcane does a masterful job depicting Vi's unrelenting nature, but also highlighting how her perseverance does not yield perfection, nor even that it is sufficient for victory. As seen in the show's first fight scene, Vi is tough, resilient, and ferocious in combat, but also lacks disciplined defense in her fighting style and is punished for that shortcoming. She's still quite the pugilist nonetheless. And where does that skill come from, you ask? Well, Arcane shows us. Imagine that, a show trusting its audience even a little bit. Yeah, the scene isn't exactly subtle, but it doesn't need to be because it's natural. This is the kids' hangout. This is what they do when they have time to kill or need to lay low. Bai has done this a lot. All of that is presented to us, along with a bit of expository dialogue to set the scene. Remind me why we bother with this dump. Vander said to lay low. Enforcers never come down here, so... Still, it's so much better than one character telling the heroine, you're so talented, brave, and strong, or... I still remember when you got your black belt at 15. Such lines of dialogue aren't necessarily always bad, but they can stray into the realm of elevating the character for the sake of the theme or the point instead of trying to genuinely develop a character's personality or backstory. Additionally, scenes like this highlight another crucial point in favor of Arcane's writing. Every moment matters. The characters in Arcane are largely so incredible because every scene, every action, every line of dialogue has weight and meaning behind it. There is no idle fluff, no meaningless pomp, no moment simply intended to show off the heroine's awesomeness, often at everyone else's expense. One of the best examples of this is the duel between Jinx and Echo, which exemplifies how to tell a meaningful story in a tiny amount of time without a single word spoken, as every second of that encounter positively drips with significance and substance. However, since this video is about Vi, we'll consider a different scene. Take her conversation with Vander after the kids have returned from their disastrous heist. Every line spoken has weight behind it, either establishing Vi's character as it currently exists, They've got plenty while we're down here scraping together coins. Or indicating how she will need to grow. Those kids look up to you. When people look up to you, you don't get to be selfish. All the while fleshing out her relationship with her father figure. We're gonna be fine, right? I'll take care of it. The complexity of character shown here is awesome. On one hand, Vi is a fierce advocate for independence and autonomy, one who desires a better life for herself and is willing to fight for it. On the other hand, she trusts totally in Vander, in his protection, guidance, and wisdom. We as humans tend to desire independence and agency for ourselves, yet simultaneously we want to be safe and protected, and the two are often in conflict. We have to ask, which is more important? It's a tough choice, though it tends to be an easier one when not thinking purely of ourselves. Vi is willing to turn herself in to surrender her freedom for the freedom and safety of her family. She cannot choose both for herself, but she can sacrifice one to obtain both for the others. And this is a huge part of why Vi is such a wonderful character. It's hard to overstate just how important this is. Vi is not motivated by some inane, vacuous desire for self-gratification. She does not seek power or status for their own sake. Yes, she repeatedly points out the disparity between the topsiders and the residents of the lanes, but she always says we or us. What Vi cares about most of all is her family and her sister. I know that's hardly a surprising revelation. Everyone who has seen the show can tell you that, but I point it out nonetheless because protagonists who primarily exist for and care about themselves are shallow, dull, empty characters who reflect modern Hollywood's misguided view of what is important. That is, me. Ultimately, stories have to resonate with us in order to be truly good. They can be cleverly written, well acted, and have magnificent effects and action sequences, but if all of that is done to elevate or prop up a shallow wish fulfillment of a hero or heroine, those stories are rightly going to be tossed onto the trash heap of cinematic history. I should note that anti-heroes do not fit into this comparison since they are purposefully written to be hated or condemned by the audience. We are not meant to cheer for them, nor hopefully to relate to the vices that drive them. Vi does not need the story to prop her up because, in her eyes, this story is not hers. She cares about one thing above all else, a bond that is worth holding onto no matter what happens, a relationship that has weathered unspeakable horrors. 
in the cruel undercity of Zahn, Bai has, in her sisterly bond with Powder, an opportunity to experience kindness, compassion, and love. The contrast between Vi's combative nature outside their home and her gentle, protective treatment of Powder is remarkable. This is how Vi needs to act in order to survive, but this is who she truly is at heart. This is why she does what she does. That is why it's so tragic, then, when Vi lashes out at Powder after Powder of... <laughs> this hot-headed, violent side of Vi is established and acknowledged, but it is shocking to see it directed at Powder, who before had only known love from her sister, even if I didn't fully trust Powder. Imagine being Vi in this scene. Imagine, after loving and protecting your only remaining blood relative for years and years, standing up for her and teaching her all you know, that you hurt her in a moment of rage and anguish, a moment you regret almost immediately, but can never take back. Vi's punch cannot be unthrown. She is unable to undo the harm done in the span of a single second. And we can imagine that. Because, although likely not as dramatically, we have been Vi in a moment like this. There is hardly a person on Earth who can't pinpoint one, or let's be real, several, moments in time when they spoke or acted in an irreversible way, causing lasting pain or damaging a relationship. The moments when we are at our weakest and most vulnerable are when we tend to lash out and do something we will always regret. Vi's story speaks to that near-universal truth. Thankfully, both for us and for Vi, the story doesn't end there. Vi cannot undo what she did, but she can try to make it right. She can find powder and ask for forgiveness and reconciliation. She can hope to restore what once was. And for a few brief moments, it appears that their reunion just might be happy. Powder's desperate smoke signal brought Vi to her against all odds, and the audience is given some hope that things will turn out alright after all. But that's not Arcane's way. Deep wounds that have festered over the course of the years are not easily healed with a band-aid and a hug. Vi cannot rewind time and have her relationship with Powder go back to the way it was. Powder has changed. She is no longer the small, helpless girl in constant need of protection and reassurance. This new creature wielding a Gatling gun with shocking brutality is not the girl Vi left behind. Vi has changed too, but her primary motivation and much of her core personality traits have remained constant. The transformation Powder has undergone has left her nearly unrecognizable. The abandonment she suffered broke her spirit to the point that she no longer trusts anyone to truly have her best interests at heart. The total trust in her sister that she had as a child has been replaced by suspicion and paranoia. So why does Powder's transformation matter? Because we see it through Vi's eyes. Characters who are steadfastly dedicated to a singular goal can tend toward being dull or flat if their progress toward that goal is a steady uphill climb. As mentioned before, Vi's journey is no such thing. Just when you think that she and her friends have staged a successful, daring rescue of Vander, everything blows up in their faces. Quite literally. The much-anticipated happy reunion turns sour as Jinx's psychosis causes her to distrust Vi, and Vi realizes that she doesn't even recognize the girl fighting next to her. These external obstacles create a far more interesting and tension-filled journey for the viewer who is watching from Vi's perspective. Of course, not all the impediments are external. Vi herself fails. As she admits to Caitlyn, Then a real monster showed up, and I just ran away. There seems to be a double meaning here. Most obviously, Vi left Powder for Silco to find after the incident at the fish market. Yes, Vi tried to return to her sister, but only after hitting her, calling her a jinx, and storming away. More subtly, though, Vi had just fled the scene with a wounded Caitlyn, despite Powder being right there. Despite Vi's vow that she had to try to change her sister, no matter how far gone Echo said she might be. The monster Vi fled was not just Silco, but Jinx. What other time in the show does Vi run away from a fight? Go ahead, name it. Vi could not stand seeing her sister truly transformed, so she ran. But if Vi can't have her sister back, she can at least exact vengeance on the man who took her away from Vi, the man who poisoned her very home. It's important to note that Vi does genuinely care about the inhabitants of the lanes. She is all too familiar with the pain of living in the Undercity and does want to alleviate it. As Vander says, she's got a good heart. 
However, that doesn't mean that she always makes the right decision in pursuit of her goal, however admirable that goal may be. Vi is, to the end, impatient, and prone to acting before thinking through every possible outcome. That's not to say that Vi does not demonstrate growth. She absolutely does. But you cannot, nor should not, expect a 180-degree turn from recklessness into fully mature prudence. Take, for example, her two duels with Savika. In the first, Vi just charges in knee first and then is quickly caught off guard by Savika's shimmer arm. In the second, Vi makes her entrance, surveys the situation, and sizes up her opponent before starting to throw punches. Could Vi have acted more patiently, done extra reconnaissance, maybe even discovered Savika's newest enhancement so she would be much more prepared for the fight? Sure, but this is Vi we're talking about. We can only expect so much growth. Too much change and the character becomes unrecognizable. So, even though we have seen Vi struggle with Powder becoming Jinx, even appearing to give up on her sister, her desire to be reunited with Powder is never fully extinguished, and resurfaces in the final season of Season 1, as Vi, out of options, desperately pleads with Jinx to return Powder to her, to run away with her, leaving behind everything they've ever known. But by this point in the story, the audience knows it won't work, because it can't. But we have also come to know Vi, and we know that she has to try, because how could she forgive herself if she did not put everything she had into one last attempt to heal her bond with her sister? To neglect to do so would be antithetical to Vi's whole character. That sisterly bond forms one of the most crucial points of tension in the show, and it is also why Vi simply would not work as a male character. I've seen comments suggesting that in order to write a strong female character, you just write a dude and then switch the bodies. Yeah, no. Women and men aren't the same. We can't just fit seamlessly into one another's characters without it being horribly awkward. In fact, the reason so many modern heroines fail to win the love of audiences is because they act like men, specifically unlikable tough guys who are obsessed with their own self-image. Vi needed to be a girl, because Powder was a girl, because a bond between sisters is simply going to be different than that of two siblings of opposite sexes. A younger brother would likely not so readily embrace the protection and comfort that Vi gives Powder, for example. An older brother would likely be more concerned with outside affairs than with his bond with his younger sister. And the two simply wouldn't be as close if they didn't share a gender. Similarly, Vi's relationship with Vander has a distinct father-daughter dynamic. Yes, Vander is encouraging and relatively gentle, considering their circumstances, with all his kids. But the tenderness he shows Vi, this tough, rebellious teenager, is unlike how fathers would treat a son in the same situation. And finally, Vi being a dude would seriously undercut her status as an underdog, and that is a key part of Vi's character. Vi is undersized, even when going up against Savika. Having her be an adult man, after the time skip anyway, would mean she is at least as big and strong as most of her opponents, which would make her skill and toughness less interesting or impressive. Vi struggles in every aspect of life that is absolutely central to who she is. Giving her a significant physical edge just wouldn't work. It would make it harder to cheer her on, since there might be a temptation to feel pity for her overmatched opponents. It's truly incredible how the show managed to get us to cheer for Vi, to like her. She seems to be everything that so many people dislike in the modern strong female lead. She talks tough, she is superb at fighting and can beat up guys twice her size. Though usually only with some other advantage, the show wisely has her duels be against Savika, from whom Vi can believably tank a punch or two. She's got shortcut pink hair, and she complains about rich people quite frequently. You put that recipe in the hands of writers of lesser skill, and the result absolutely would be another preachy girl boss with a flat character arc who's all about being strong for herself and fulfilling her desires. Instead, Arcane delivered a protagonist with a meaningful journey, with a goal beyond her own vanity. Vi is supremely confident and capable, but also relatively inexperienced and in need of advice and wisdom. Every scene of Vi's either establishes her character, develops it, or fleshes out her relationships with others. This purposeful storytelling and character building is so often missing in modern media, as the focus centers on the message, point, or theme which the creators are trying to ram home. Arcane never feels the need to shove in our faces the fact that Vi is strong. It simply lets her be strong. And since her strength is not dedicated to her own self-fulfillment, but rather is used for the well-being of the people Vi cares about, she is incredibly enjoyable as a character. I phrased that intentionally. 
Vi is brash, rude, and short-tempered. I dare say most of us would not really get along with her in real life. I've seen quite a few comments talking about how the commenter doesn't like strong women in media, basically because they're not what this guy would want in a wife. That's silly. Judging a character by the litmus test of would I want to date her, or even would we be friends is short-sighted. These are characters in fictional stories. They don't need to match our ideals. Shit, I'm a Roman Catholic with quite traditional values. I don't expect Vi or most characters from modern Hollywood to live up to my values, and they don't. That doesn't mean that I can't enjoy what is good and true in the stories being told, or that I can't appreciate the genuine care and love that goes into creating these characters and worlds. Vi's excellent writing is a testament to what creative minds can do when they immerse themselves in the world which they are creating. Too many modern writers seem unable to divorce themselves from our reality, our politics and social climate when writing their stories. The result is ham-fisted injections of what pass for modern values and ideas that feel out of place in the given fantasy, superhero, or sci-fi world. Out workers, taking your trades! By purposefully and painstakingly building the world of Arcane and writing people who fit that world, not ours, Arcane's writers created characters who audiences either love or love to hate. Such characters bring us into their world with them as we watch, letting us forget the anxieties of our world that have been swirling around in our brains and simply experience their story. I hope we get a lot more stories told with the attention and care that Arcane is, and more protagonists who are powerful yet imperfect and who act out of love for their friends and family. Is that really too much to ask? Thank you for watching. Let me know if there are any other heroes or heroines you'd like to see me analyze, and I will see you in the next one.